Oh, well, guess what I found out yesterday. Oh, shit, what? Uh, I need surgery. What surgery? I have, uh, like, an infection that starts at the base of my tooth and is about as big as my thumb, apparently, going up into my sinus. Oh, that's awesome. Isn't it? Yeah. So they have to cut open my gum and surgically remove the infection. Cool. Which would explain why it sounded like I'm sick for, like, the past forever. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, good luck. Well, I'm excited. That's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you and everyone involved. Oh, boy, I'm so excited. And by everyone involved, I mean you. You're the only one involved in this. Me and whatever poor bastard has to well, drive me home while I'm still under the gas. I mean, I guess that's true, too. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, That's shit. well. I'll tell you what. You know, it's uh, it's it's difficult. You get all kinds of fun medical things as you get older. Speaking of getting older, uh, we got old dudes rocking, Jeff. Is that really your transition? That was beautifully done. <laughs> and the cool thing is that we got two old dudes rocking, so we can start with whichever one you want. Um gonna be real here let's just get green day out of the way let's just get green day out of the way okay <laughs> that was optimistic jeff is excited to talk about saviors oh, yeah. the new album by green day hi i'm chris and i'm jeff and welcome to the sound judgment podcast where every episode we'll be discussing all of the important musical topics from reviews to which member of motley crew is the most vile I'm going to judge the officials. I'm going to judge all the judges. It's going to take you people years to recover from all my opinions. I am excited to talk about Saviors, the newest album by Green Day. No, it's really not that. It's, 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 it's more of the fact that, as we're going to get into, I don't really have a whole ton to say about the album itself. Okay. So let's just literally get it out of the way. But okay, let's get the fun stuff first. Christopher. Yeah. What is your history with the band Green Day? I knew like a bunch of the radio songs growing up and I got international super hits on CD uh, from a Kmart when I was like, I don't know, what year did that come out? Probably like 11 or 12 or something. It, it came out in like 2000 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. probably around then. Uh, and then I had Dookie and then I had American Idiot and that's kind of my history with Green Day. I've listened to other albums over the years, but the ones that I grew up with were the international super hits that came out right before American Idiot, uh, American Idiot, and the rest of Dookie. Okay, but like you, you have a history of them, which is like you listened to. I think what a lot of people our age listen to. I listen to super hits quite a bit, but I don't have an extensive history with all of their albums yeah. and beautiful memories of. I would bet most people our age share that sentiment. They probably have Dookie, International Super Hits, and American Idiot, right? Like, if I had to place bets, I bet those are the three most owned Green Day albums for people who are in their early to mid-30s. I feel like um, a lot of people in our generation, if they were going to get really into Green Day, it was during the American Idiot album for exclusively yes. the length of the American Idiot album tour. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Which came out in 2004. So that's like when our age, oh my god, that was 20 years ago. So when our age group up. were teenagers, right? Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm, and my history is honestly not too far different. I actually got into Green Day a little later than you. Um, I did that thing uh, that many young, young people do when they're trying to be too cool for things that are cool, which is that I completely wrote them off. Yeah. Right? Like, when I was in seventh grade, my school had a battle of the bands. They realized there were enough, like, middle schoolers in bands. They did a battle of the bands. It was really cool. And a few friends of mine were in a band that did a few Green Day covers. It genuinely was one of the first times I heard some of those songs. Right. I, I mean, maybe I had heard them on the radio, but I definitely didn't know them. I was in high school when I was introduced to songs like Minority or Basket Case. So I really kind of missed them for, for a while. Um, and again, it was, it was purely because I got into punk rock very young, so I, I wrote off all of the quote-unquote poser bands, right? This was the punk elitist thing. 
Yeah, it absolutely was. Okay. I mean, because I was I was 12 years old and listening to like Sham 69. So something like Green Day, that's not punk. Meanwhile, like no, I I well, my opinion on that has very very much changed. I like the idea of a little elitist 12 year old you running around though. Oh my god. Just as worst. obnoxious as he is today except this time Just about in punk different music. Ways. It was about different things, but um, my personality was definitely there. <laughs> but no, so I, I really wrote them off. And then there was this period of time where between a, a good friend of mine, you know, we would like go camping or whatever a lot. He would have a CD player and he had like international super hits and he made me listen to a few songs. And then around that same time, I was going to like house parties and Minority was one of the songs that would always get thrown in rotation. And that was growing on me. And then I went through this phase where I was raiding my dad's old CDs. And Dookie was one of them. Like, my dad owned this CD from, you know, early 90s. So I'm like, all right, shit, maybe I should give them a shot. And then within a year, like, American Idiot came out, and I was already listening to their back catalog, and... and I really enjoy a lot of their stuff um, up to and, and, and even through to an extent American Idiot. But I do think, I, I still stand by, like, I think those three albums, Dookie, International Super Hits, American Idiot, I think those are the most owned albums by people our age, and I think that's, I think that's fair, right? If you're going to own three albums, those are the ones you want. It covers most of what you need. It really does. But can I make a weird... I, I found something out literally just today. Okay. Their first album, 1039 Smoothed Out Slappy Hours, right? Yeah. Came out on April 13th, 1990. Which means if they waited one more week, it would have come out on April 20th. Mm -hmm. Why did they not wait one more week to come out on 420? I am angry that they did this. You do not share my annoyance at this. I'm just going to let it go. I, you know, I would hope that if it was in their power, that would have happened. Was it independently released? I'm sure it was not in their power, no. But I'm still annoyed that the people in charge didn't see the someone brilliance th in that. Someone dropped the ball, that's for sure. Like, the band is called Green Day. And, you know, music is typically released on Fridays. And April 20th was a Friday. Are you kidding me? Do we know where Green Day comes from? The name Green Day? Yeah. I mean, surely it is a marijuana reference. It has to be. I know it's one of those ones that he that Billy Joe has said, like, if, if you know, at some point in his career, if he could have changed the name of the band, he would have. Like, it was very much a he was 17 or whatever when he named it. You know what I mean? It's one of those deals. Like... 35-year-old Billy Joe Armstrong wasn't exactly proud of the name Green Day anymore, which it really just kind of pushes me I'm th uh, more. I'm thinking it's a... I'm thinking it's a... I want to send you a screenshot of a movie, and I've uh, there have been times I've looked at this and I wondered if that's where they got it. Tuesday is Soylent Green Day. I... You know what? I mean, I guess it's possible. I don't really know. It doesn't make me any less annoyed that they didn't release on April 20th, but still. I just think it's interesting the way that, like, the posts, like, separate Green Day from the rest of it. I'm, it's just one of those things where it's like, I wonder if that, that's, like, a thing that they saw. Anyway. I guess to explain what it is we're looking at here, I, this has to be a screenshot from the movie Soylent Green. Soylent Green. I'll put it up on the screen. It's a group of people in front of signs. It's three individual signs. Tuesday is, next sign, Soylent Final sign, Green Day. So, Tuesday is Soylent Green Day. Um, interesting. I don't believe that's the case, but maybe I'm totally wrong. Anyway, we're not talking about international super hits, or American Idiot, or Soylent or Green, Dookie, or Soylent Green. We're talking about saviors. Um, do you want to get into any individual tracks? Do you have any all-encompassing notes? My all-encompassing note was that this album was more fun than I expected it to be. Yeah, it is. Oh, it absolutely is. It absolutely is. I'm not super familiar with their work past 
American Idiot, but I know that I've heard a couple songs off of each record, just as singles or just trying to listen to them. And nothing, nothing has grabbed me. And I will say that for most of the runtime of this album, I was entertained. Yes. No, I'm I'm going to agree with that. Um, so I actually do know a lot of what they've released post American Idiot, and a lot of it's fine. Like the the Uno Dos Tre trio are all serviceable. I don't think they're incredible in any way or shape or form, but they're all totally fine. I think they really fell off on that Father of All album that came out uh very early 2020. And it, man, it really was like a precursor to the rest of the year. It is, it is a hot garbage album. There's a thing that happened on Father of All that happened again on Saviors. And I have a theory as to what that thing is. I genuinely think they are artificially de-aging Billy Joe's voice. Yo, Billy Joel sounds great. The band actually sounds really good all together. That, but this album sounds like really energetic and like. No, no, I didn't say. I didn't say he doesn't sound good. I think his voice sounds too young for him. Oh. And if you listen to, uh, just a couple years ago, they released a like BBC Sessions live album. Okay. And he sounds appropriate for his age. His uh, voice has thickened and matured. Obviously, he still like sings through his nose. It's still very whiny, but his the, the the timbre of his voice has darkened a lot. It's much bigger and fuller sounding, and that is not how he sounds on Saviors or Father of All. He sounds young and even more whiny. Oh. I genuinely think they're doing some, so I, I couldn't pinpoint exactly what it is. They are editing his voice in some way, and my only guess is they are trying to make him sound younger than he is. And I don't understand it, because it's not like he can't sing. His style aside, he's always had a pretty damn strong voice. Yeah. And he has a much bigger range than people tend to think he does. Like... I cannot sing a lot of the Green Day catalog. It is not in my vocal range. He he's he's a lot more impressive than people seem to think. Okay, so should we should we talk about this for a minute, assuming that he's not being like digitally edited too much or Well, I just that's just a, that's just an all encompassing thought. Otherwise, like let that go. That's just a random thing that I can't get out of my head. Every time I hear this, it sounds like it's an older album. Than it is. I was I was gonna say because some of these songs like with his voice and the production, which I mean the production makes sense, but it, it sounds like if it was on international super hits or American Idiot, like I wouldn't question it. No, not at all. Um, well, at least in terms of sound, not like maybe not in yeah, composition, say, not in terms not of compositionally, composition, uh, but I mean in terms of uh, if if you threw this on and said this was something that didn't get released after Warning. They were going more experimental before American Idiot or something. I'd believe. No, that. it absolutely does have that sound, and it definitely has the energy. I mean, I I will I will fully back you up on that. They have the energy. Is it Bobby Socks where, Bill where Billy Joe does like a screaming, like I think it almost sounds like Chester Bennington on the chorus of the song. That is Bobby Socks, isn't it? It's the song where he goes full by. Uh, do you want? Yeah, yeah, it is. That is Bobby Sox. Um, sorry, I had to, I had to like sing through it in my head. No, he, I think he. I mean, I think he sounds good. Again, I, I artificially de aging whatever it is they're doing to his voice aside. Um, again, I, the I AI think he involved. sounds. Re- I think he sounds really good, and I think the band sounds great, and I think they sound really energetic. I think this album falls flat in. The lyrics, and in some cases, I don't want to necessarily say compositionally, because I think compositionally, they're still really into that whole, like, I don't know, it's almost like he got really into Broadway, right? Yeah. Uh, surprise, it's almost as if they, they wrote a full musical and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a musical version of the Ramones. It really is, like, if you, it, 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 I mean, it's exactly what it is. You take a punk band and introduce them to musical theater, and that's yeah. suddenly what they are. Yeah. So I don't want to say compositionally, but definitely lyrically, there's a lot lacking. <laughs> if I had to pick a weak point, it would be the lyrics, but it's not all bad. It's not the most annoying album to listen through. No. I will say, 
starting this album, I was not optimistic. Uh, the opening track, The American Dream is Killing Me, yeah, sounds to me like if you fed the album American Idiot into an AI and said, write another song. Yeah. It doesn't sound like it was written by a person. Uh, the, the melody, the cadence of those verses makes no sense to me. He does that thing where, like, line one is seven syllables longer than line two. Yeah. And it just feels rushed and then lopsided. And I know he's better than that, so I don't have a clue what the hell's going on. I'm here. pretty, I'm pretty sure he found two notebooks and just slapped two songs together. He found one, uh, like really old Mountain Goats lyric book, and then uh, he found something in like the trash off of Broadway for the for the chorus. <laughs> and he just he had he's like, all right, I got some verses and I got some choruses now, and I'm gonna glue them together. That's, and yeah, let's just go with it. It's it's fine. Um, I don't know. So lyrically, I don't even want, I don't even think I need to pull examples. It's not what they used to be. And I think my best description of this is, has, have you ever seen the video that someone made, I think a handful of years ago, and it's like Green Day then versus now? No. Have you ever seen this? It's not a Green Day song. It's like someone recreating like a verse in a chorus of two Green Day songs. Okay. So like the Green Day then is like this super amped up fast, like, I forget what the words are, something like, I feel like masturbating until my eyes pop out of my skull. Yeah. And then when it cuts to the Green Day now, it's this like slow, like, kind of rhythm going on. And the lyrics are like, I love you. And I hate the government. <laughs> and I love you. And that's really how this kind of feels. Or at least it's kind of... Oh, I take it back. That's how Father of All feels. This strays into that realm a little bit, um, lyrically. Yeah. Uh, I know a friend of ours has gone on this rant before. In fact, you know, so speaking of back in the day when people were trying to get me into Green Day, uh, our buddy was a huge Green Day fan in, like, the early, mid-2000s, right? So, like, young teen versions of us. Huge Green Day fan. Like, he's the first person I ever knew who even knew the album 1039 Slappy Hours or whatever even existed. Up until then, I've never even heard of it. So he's gone on the rant before with, like, he hates political Green Day. Even though, like, politically, I know damn well agrees with Billy Joe, like, on everything. Yeah, like, and he's very, not even... very, like, very, very, like, left, liberal, progressive. I'm gonna beep all of those words so no one knows our political connotations, <laughs> even though they sh they'll easily find Billy Joe's. But here's so the thing. is a vehement white supremacist. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> and Billy Joe put on their white hoods and go to Klan meetings... In Jackson, Mississippi, every other Tuesday. Um, no. So, like, politically, they're on the same end of the spectrum. But just, like, I think Green Day aren't good at writing that because their lyrics just come off. Really, they're really not a whole lot better than just, did you know Americans are dumb? I hate the government. And that's kind of it. Like, rinse, lather, repeat. You have a Green Day album. I was going to say, because he's not even against, like, politically minded lyrics. He just no. hates when Green Day does it. He just thinks Green Day does it poorly, and I completely agree with yeah. him for the most part. Yeah. I think sometimes they do it really well. Um, I I really, I will defend American Idiot all day, every day. I think American Idiot is brilliant. I even like 20, 21st Century Breakdown has some really great songs, even though lyrically they're starting to push into that realm of, I love you, I hate the government. Okay. So some of the lyrics are written in crayon, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Some of the lyrics may be written in crayon. You wouldn't think this man is in his 50s. You would think this man is 15. Maybe maybe some of the maybe some of these could have been cut. There's probably we didn't need 15 of these. But what were the standouts to you, Jeff? What were the good songs? The best song on here is Father to a Son. I was so disappointed that that wasn't a Bathory cover. Go ahead. Uh <laughs> Jesus, no. I am such a sucker for Billy Joe ballads. I think he has always done an amazing job with these, like, 
sentimental ballads going back to like Macy's Day Parade. Yeah, on, was that Warning? I think. Yeah, that's an underrated song. I adore that song. I absolutely adore that song. That's a good pick. That's a good deep cut, Jeff. It's not even, not that deep, but it's not really. It's not super deep, but it's not like I don't think it's a you know whatever. But, like, I mean, even going into the most well-known one is Wake Me Up When September Ends. Despite the memification of it, I think that's a beautiful song. I think that's an amazing song. Father to a Son suffers lyrically. It, it, it definitely is, is building more off of some of those, like, cliches more than, you know, his his very, like, his earnestness and his much more personal metaphors like he uses in some of his other ballads. Yeah. Like, he uses the one line is, I never knew a love could be scarier than anger. And, like, that's not a bad line, but that's not a personal line either. And I expect personal from him, because he's usually really good at speaking from his own perspective on his ballads. Um, but it's it's a pretty song. The melody is very nice. Compositionally, this is, like, top-notch. This is... This is peak Green Day composition, right? Uh, the orchestral accompaniment that comes in, like, halfway-ish through the song, in the way it really rounds out with the last, like, minute or so of the song. There's that guitar lead. It's buried in the mix, but it's hiding in there. Uh, I mean, it's... This, this is so much, like, I can hear this... Again, we're going back to This Is Punk on Broadway. And I think This Is Punk on Broadway almost at its peak. Like, this... I think Father to a Son is, is a really, really great song. Um, unfortunately, it's followed immediately by Saviors, where Billy Joe picks up his megaphone vocal effect thing again. Everyone that he's favorite. been using that that he's been using for twenty years, and I'm I'm real sick of that. Uh, that needs to go. So I just pretend Saviors doesn't exist, and I just put Father to a Son on like its own playlist elsewhere, right? Because it's yeah. a pretty song. So Father to a Son. Uh, quite frankly, my takeaway from this is I want. Billy Joe to do like an indie folk album. Like that's what I think he would be great at. Somehow. That's fair. You know, that'd be I want, fun. I want like even give him, give him like 15, 20 years. Right. Yeah. I want old man, Billy Joe. Yeah. Doing like indie folk music. Yeah. Chris, what's your standout for you? What's, what's a, what's a top notch, uh, 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 sorry, track for you. Jeff, I like Susie chapstick, even though the name makes me want to jump out of a second story it's- window. It's a good one. It actually is a good one. Um, I'm a sucker. We're talking about being a sucker for things. I'm a sucker for like the vague little I miss you song that's not specific enough that it really brings anyone particular to mind, like an ex or something. It's just kind of like in general, you know? I mean, again, it it is a good one. It is a good one. I, I really like the line. Cause I, again, because I, I know I've mentioned this before. I'm a line for the simple... I'm a line for really simple words that I can just like hear a person actually saying Mm -hmm. in the line. Not even the drugs seem to work. Oh my God. That's such, that's such a damn good sentence. Um, I, I'm a sucker for stuff like that. I love stuff like that. No, Susie Chapstick is, is another very good one. I'm going to put that like right behind father to a son for me. Neither one of us picked a particularly heavy song. One eyed bastard was fun. There you go. Okay, okay, so the rest of the album, when it's not lyrically stupid, aside from the uh, the, the song The American Dream is Killing Me, which I, I genuinely think is a bad song, I, I do not find that one... I find it interesting only in the fact that I find it bad to listen to. I, I, I hate the, the, the melody of the verses. I hate the lopsidedness feeling. But otherwise, this album is fun. Yes. I don't think it's great, but it's fun. And I am not mad that there are people who say this is Green Day's best album in 20 years, because I think it probably is. Jeff, this is Green Day's best album in 20 years. Yeah, it probably is. I I, I really do. I really do think that. That being said, I don't know that that on on a scale from one to 10, if Dookie and American Idiot are nines, this is a five. Yeah. Like it is still way overshadowed by their former selves. I was about to say that's not that that makes it the best Green Day album. It just makes it the best in 20 years. But it's fine and I am not mad about this. Like if there are because like, there are people now who are discovering Green Day, right? Like there are people who 
probably know a couple songs, but for the most part, this might be among the first things they hear. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with this being, like, somebody's introduction to Green Day. I think it's a solid album, but I find it unremarkable. It's fun. It has a couple standout moments. But that's just it. It has a couple standout moments. Everything else is, yeah, all right. All Jeff, right. Jeff, I'm going to say it. What? American Dream is Killing Me might be the worst song in this album, but it's better than Know Your Enemy. <sighs> no, I disagree. Wow. I disagree. Wow. I, I think Know Your Enemy is lyrically stupid, but compositionally very fun. Okay. Know Your Enemy is an amazing song for a crowd. Maybe that's maybe that's it is an amazing song for a live experience. Have you ever seen Green Day? I have not seen Green Day live. Maybe that's the problem. I saw them. Oh, my God. The problem is in my head. I saw them like not long ago. I realize I probably saw them almost 10 years ago now. (laughs) Did you see them twice or just once? I've seen them twice, but most recently had to have been like 2016, I guess. Okay. Yeah, It's, it's been a hot minute. But, uh, you know, the fact that 2020 to now feels like most of it didn't really happen correctly. We get a mulligan Um, on some of those years. Yeah, so I feel like a couple of those years didn't really happen. So in my head, it was three years ago, but it was really more like seven or eight years ago, probably, I saw them. I just woke up one day and I was in the middle of a podcast. What the fuck? Uh, Yeah, I don't have a clue how this happened. Jesus Christ. Um, but no, so so Know Your Enemy is a great song in a live setting. So I can forgive it for that. I don't think it's a great song overall, but I think it's compositionally very fun. It works very well in a live setting. It's very fun in a live setting, which is full of people who probably love that song. And it's definitely a crowd pleaser, which makes it a good time. I don't think... That is one thing I will say. All right. Are, are, can you... Okay. <laughs> are you good? You're on the, your enemy. Uh, Go ahead. But that's a good melody. Da-na-na-na-na-na. Right? Fine. That's that's a good melody. No, that's a good melody. That's a good hook, man. Um, The problem I have with Saviors is it doesn't have any of those. I do not have a clue what song on here is going to be the crowd favorite. I really don't. I don't know what the singles were. Other than I remember hearing Bobby Socks. I, I, I have no idea. So, I don't know. But, it's a 3 out of 5 album. I had a good time. It was a good time. I had a good time. Unremarkable, but I had a good better, time. Better than I expected. One thumb up. <laughs> yeah, one thumb up is one fine. One thumb up. Jeff, take us home. I'll say, are we going home, or are we moving on? I don't know. We're moving on, be- but take us home. We're take, take us-, us home. Take us, huh? Yeah, because for for the people listening, it's not going to be five minutes. It's going to be like a week. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure how you plan on doing that. So I'm taking. What us you're going to do is you're going to get in the car. You're going to take us home, but then you're going to do a U-turn and you're going to take us to Saxonburg. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. Well, I'll pick you up on the way. All right. Thanks. You're, you're you're kind of on the way to Saxonburg for me, so that's fine. Yeah, like a little bit. Um. Yeah. All right, Chris. I'll I'll see you in five minutes at Sac uh, to pick you up to on the way to Saxonburg. All right. I'll see you in a week. I'll see you then.